Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, I know in some cases it's good morning. So I'd like to welcome you all here to today's webinar, which is titled Global Payroll, the Consequences of Doing no Nothing. So I think we all are familiar with that situation where we know something's not working um, and we're in that place between what should we, should we do something about it or not? Um, and then the next step is what's the, what's the best option and what's the best next steps? So that's what we're going to discuss today. Um, so today's webinar will be led by Mary Holland, um, who is our Chief Evangelist here at PACEF. And we're thrilled to be joined by one of our really great clients, uh, Lysenko Nicola from SumUp. So SumUp is a great example of a company um, who's in that scale-up phase and they needed a scalable payroll platform to align with their growth objectives. So we look forward to hearing a lot more about that uh, later on in the session. So just before we get started, I have some um, housekeeping points. Uh, just to note that the webinar is being recorded. It will be available to all participants after the event. Um, our webinars are available on demand on our website and our YouTube channel. And we also uh, produce them as podcasts on Spotify, so you can listen um, to the amount of time that suits you. Um, but also every attendee will receive an email with the link directly to view. So we have a good lot of people on here today. Um, so everyone will be muted except for the panel. Um, we will have time at the end for Q&A. So if you have any questions or comments, just post them in the Q&A section and we will address them at the end. Um, we'll also have a couple of webinar polls throughout the session just to break things up. So um, for now, I'll pass you over to Mary um, to get us started. Um, thanks, Aoife. I know you're going to um, bring up our presentation today Yeah. as you get ready. So as, as Aoife mentioned, we're happy to have Lysenko here um, today, and he's going to share some of his, of his, in, his insights. So looking at global payroll, there, there's always consequences of doing nothing, and we, we do know that it's uh, challenging with many things going on today. You can move to the next slide, Aoife. So... With the bringing in of, of 2023 after many years, we have many things that are happening in our organizations. And I'm sure as we walk through some of these items or talk about them, I'm sure that some of them resonate definitely in your organizations, or they may be some things on your strategic um, list of things that you want to achieve this year. So we have the, the issue of what do we do um, if we don't have budget? What do we do? Do we stop? What do we look at? So we have to take a look at where our payroll is today. So doing nothing brings issues into compliance. What about our processes that we have that's manual and we have spreadsheets? What are, what's happening with those as we go across our organizations looking at what's happening today in our organizations? What does our C-suite want um, for reporting? Are we able to deliver that we, or we don't have any ability to deliver those items? So. Are our employees able to view their pay slips um, on a portal? And better yet, do you have the ability to bring those pay slips into your HCM system if you're using um, a Workday success factors or some of those platforms that are out there, Oracle? So looking at that's possible. Really, where is your payroll today? Do you feel like it's stuck into 1990 or maybe you even feel like it's in the, in the dinosaur age? Those are things that we need to think about. And as technology moves forward and as our world has moved forward with, with the digital um, technology, we need to evaluate what are the consequences if we just sit in the 1990s or the dinosaur age, we're gonna be behind and we're not gonna be able to strategic support our organization. So with that, Aoife, we can bring um, our first polling question up. Just, just one moment. Okay, so for our first poll, so if nothing changes for you this year, what will remain your biggest payroll frustration? Um, we have manual data entry, limited reporting, answering your employees' payslip and qu queries, struggling to manage your uh, ICPs, your local service providers, or all of the above. So we'll just give that a minute or so, two to... 
Lysenko, what do you what do you think our attendees are going to answer on this question? And I'm sure some of them might have applied to you uh, in the in the last couple of years. So, what do you think the response will be from our attendees? Um, manual data entry and limited reporting. That's the the main one of the main issues I had in my end. Right. I I kind of I kind of agree um, with that, but I could kind of almost say all of the above because we have the the in country providers, right? Depending on you may, you may have a good combination and you're very fortunate and you're working on some of the other items, but it's just managing the expectations, I would say, would be one of the pieces that, that could be in there. But definitely the reporting, because I think all of us know um, we need the reporting to be able to make strategic decisions. And as payroll has all of that uh, information in the, with their fingertips, and it is costly. I, I think sometimes you kind of, you're working in payroll and when you look at it from a global perspective, what is the cost of the business? And that's that's really important information, especially um, as some, you at sum up, you're expanding and moving into new locations. What's that cost? It's, it's gonna be very important. And also sometimes our, our organizations are looking at where's the best place to move, you know, one um, A to B and, and move it to a lower cost location. What does that look like? So, Aoife, do we have the poll results? Yes, and um, I think you should be able to see them there. So, yeah, so we uh, kind of what we thought manual data entry is still um, coming out top there as a key challenge at 38%, um, all of the above, and then we're going into the reporting. Okay, excellent. So then we can uh, move forward. Not, not a surprise, I think, for that. I think we all probably in the global space have that. So as we as we move forward with global payroll, we all I think all of us on the webinar today will agree that we need the local expertise to be able to process correctly in a in a certain country or location. And why do we need that? Because there's a vast amount of employment and taxation rules across the world, and no one is never the same. I use sometimes my home country of the U.S. to say. Even though we're one country, we actually have 50 different states with different rules and regulations. So we do need experts that can help and support that in the, if you have the U.S. with 50 states and making sure that that's there. So you have to look at, you know, what are the providers you have today, looking at how you can use them to best service your organization. And then one of the important thing is really looking at three things I really look what are the resources or the people that we have in our organization? And then what processes do we have? And looking at that processes, do we have integration? Are you doing things manually? Who's doing what, when, and where? And the technology. So what technology do you have available to make sure that you know exactly what's happening, the visibility? Can you measure the workflow for the service level providers? Do you have the ability, as Lysenko mentioned, to bring in global reporting, which is going to be very much essential. And then now with the new air after COVID, it always existed, but it's even more important is the hybrid, the remote, and the extended workforce out there. We all know that as we go forward into 2023 and beyond, many of the organizations have hybrid working arrangements. How many days are they able to work in a different location? How are that's going to be tracked? And a lot of that will also depend on what happens with our each country's re regulations and income tax requirements that might be might be put in if we have workers working in a particular location for X number of dates. So that's something that's definitely going to be on our radar. So we can move for, forward to the next slide. So as I think all of us can agree, Global payroll has always been complex, but we have many things going on in the last two to three years. So we had um, earlier at the beginning of 2020, we had compensation packages that we were offering many, many pieces to attract employees into our organizations. Some of them are still today there in 2023, where others have been scaled back a little bit. We now know that our employees are demanding to have some flexible and the ability to have flexible work schedules. They want to be able to have some flexibility in their life, which is part of what came out of COVID. And then there is a huge demand, no matter what 
country year round, the world is really gender reporting and gender um, equality and transparency. So as we, we know that's very much important because many countries are mandating gender reporting and looking at those, that information, which is a demand that HR needs to have that information be available and where best to get that information on what's actually been paid out to employees with compensation pieces is in payroll. So we also know that countries are always expanding different rules and regulations, and that's why the in-country provider or service, um, services we have local will help us be compliant with the different regulations that change from day to day. And then, of course, in the time of 2023, we all know some organizations are doing downsizing where others are hiring. So kind of um, each end of the spectrum is there. But as we downsize, it's important to know really what's happening and the cost of downsizing. So in some um, countries, there is a requirement to, for downsizing that you may be paying compensation for months after. And in some cases, it could be a year after the person has actually downsized. And what is that cost, which is important? And we know that data privacy is in our life each and every day, and each country has its new pieces of what's required. So it does require us to be on top of that, looking at our technology, how are we sharing and exchanging file information in a secure way so we're protecting our organization and also protecting the employees that we're responsible for. And we already mentioned everybody wants to have the new image of work anywhere, anytime, kind of having that flexibility. So that's another complex piece that we have to, to deal and work in our organizations. So Eva, we can move on to our next slide. So when we look at complex, this is just a snapshot and you'll be able to get, um, have the slide, the slides will be able to be available. But if you look at the job of our global payroll manager, if we look at Lysenko, Lysenko has many, many pieces that are happening. If he just has the three countries beneath him that he's trying to manage, each of those countries have unique pieces that they're required. And globally, we're, tr we're putting this all together so that we're meeting all of the requirements that we need to have at the global strategic level. And it goes from really the data privacy all the way to reconciling the information that we have, data validation, making sure we know what the payments are. So all of those pieces are part of the operation. And it may work well if you, you may not need a technology solution if you're only doing um, work in one country. But remember, when you start to add two, three, four, five, you're going to need some visibility and a technology solution so that you know exactly what's happening, when and where. And you have audit records to, to know what's actually been changed. And you also know who's made that change. So we can move forward, um, Aoife. So the challenges I'm sure that all of you may be facing or have faced if you haven't, um, if you've been able to, to make a change and use technology to help you is, we're always in Excel spreadsheet hell. Where does that information come from? Excel is, has always been our friend for payroll, but you know, Excel is only is limited. We need to get away from Excel and also get away from manual entry so that we have integration so that the information is coming directly from the source and we're not manipulating and splitting files, which then brings in room for um, errors. If we look at um, having the ability of standardization, so one of the things when we sometimes talk about standardization People sometimes think, well, I'm never going to achieve 100% standard, standardization. Don't let that scare you. Look at where you are today. You could be possibly, when you do a review of what's happening, in some locations you might have standardization at 75 to 80%, which is good, and what are we going to work forward to? Where others, there's none. So looking at the standardization processes, what are we going to do to bring that forward? And why are we doing a process that's not standard? And it, there could be non-standard processes and it could be driven by a country requirement. So looking at what that looks like. And then the other challenges that I think often payroll professionals have is just the coordination of working with the, um, the ICP. We have no integration with the HR. We might have no integration with the ICPs. We are, might not have any connection with finance to provide GL reports or other reports that they actually need. So 
having disconnected systems and that we have not had a tool or technology to integrate it with and that we're able to pass the information through a secure site. So it comes back to our data privacy piece. And then as we move forward into 2023 and beyond, we, we want more information, we want more reports, we want the analytics to be able to make key decisions on our business to support the business. And in the day of age that we are living in, when somebody wants a report, they want it instantaneously because they're not going to wait. So we need to have the ability to have the tools for that reporting. The digital tools need to be part of the process and we need to look at how we can do the job with less resources. And that doesn't mean when we look at that is that we're going to just work on eliminating positions. We're going to work on a process that we need less resources and we can deploy those resources in other areas to support the business. So really a lot of challenges that we're facing and really how are we gonna, how are we gonna solve the problem? And the solution is we have to act on it and the consequences of doing nothing this whole list is going to continue to grow in your organization. So maybe if I just propose that maybe your organization has said there's going to be no additional funding for a technology solution. Well, please don't stop on that. Think about what your processes are today. Start to do your evaluation of what's going on. Document what you have, but also prepare that risk for your organization so that you can share that with senior management so that they know the risk of not doing anything. Here's the, here's what the impact is. So they can maybe make a decision that says, even though we have a tight budget, we are going to make um, an exception and bring in te a technology solution. But they might say, okay, that's fine. You're giving us the risk, you're giving us all the pieces, but 2024 is a year for to be able to get funding for that you still have a lot of work that you can do while you're waiting to get that funding and approval. You can prepare yourselves for that implementation and the technology and do your research. So Aoife, I'll have you go to the next slide. So this, this little checklist is really looking at where you are today, kind of thinking about what's happening today. What were some of those um, pain points in your organization last year where you failed? Are you receiving a, a lot of notices from uh, the authorities on things that weren't reported right. What's happened in your organization with the inflation and the cost of um, employer cost? What does that look like? So taking a look at what you have today and evaluating it and doing a little checklist piece of what's in your current state. And that involves understanding each of the um, countries that you're doing business in. So you're gonna to have to pull your stakeholders together to answer the questions. And I might suggest doing a little checklist so that they can complete that or a survey for each of the organizations and then pulling it together so that you can, can present it to upper management so they know what's actually going on. You can even take your countries and rate them using the um, traffic light system with red, yellow, and green and identifying the areas that are working great and just highlight that country green or some that we have to pay attention to that is red. So looking at that so that you know what's actually happening and keeping this information up to date, it's a great idea to do an evaluation at least once a year. And you might look at this quarterly or semi-annually just to take a snapshot of what's happening in your organizations. Okay, Eva. So as we talked about it kind of the consequences of doing nothing, okay? So we don't, we're just going to kind of just say, let's just keep status quo and do nothing. Well, here's the, the main consequences is you're gonna, you're still gonna be stuck into those wonderful spreadsheets and manual work. And also it's gonna impact you, especially if you use resources, um, it slows down the, the whole entire payroll process. It seems like you might be spending the whole month just focusing on, on auditing payroll and checking payroll and, and moving spreadsheets around. And the people that are payroll professionals in your organization, they may be frustrated. There's no career growth movement for them. They're not learning anything new. They don't have the automation tools that are available, that their other co their other payroll professionals that they're, they're friends with or colleagues, they have those in their other organizations. Having no standardization creates a, a big issue. 
if we just think about the many um, names that salary could be called in an organization, and especially when you have local language, what are the components that make up the base salary in it uh, for a, an employee? How, if we don't have standardization or a process that we, we can classify the elements so that we do know what's standardized, we can't have reporting and we can't compare apples to apples. And it's really important to, to recognize that if you're in 15 plus countries, and that's what we're we're rec we're doing as a reference here, but I'm going to say it could even be 10. If you don't have the standardization on your processes and the elements, it's going to make any kind of growth and standardization almost impossible. You're going to spend so much time kind of back on the spreadsheet fun of putting that together manually and doing a lot of work. And then it drives for the third, the last third one is looking at there's no global payroll management operation plan that you can share with your organization. The controls aren't in place. You don't have visibility of what's happening with the vendors. If you don't have a control platform, you can't measure the performance of your vendors through SS SLAs. You, you don't know what stakeholders are delivering items on time. So you really have kind of a messy arrangement and you have no visibility at your fingertips to be able to support the business. And at the end of the day, the important thing is to, to remember is when we were hired in our organization, we were hired to support the business and we can't deliver those items if we don't have the tools and things in place. And spreadsheets and manual transactions are not the, are not the solution to that. So we're now in a new era. We need to look at what we can do to, to move forward. Okay, Aoife? So, so how do we get out? How do we get out of where we are today? So, definitely, when we look across the um, the world and what you do, there was a trend for a period of time to go look for one vendor, and that one vendor would service everything, and that was kind of a model that was used um, in the '90s and late '90s and early 2000s. That actual model has proven to not actually work uh, for organizations because they need to have different models for different um, countries that they're working in. And it depends on the number of employees you have in your organization, some of the compensation components that you need. So you need to, to end the compliance requirements that you might need in your organization. We, uh, we talked about it being local. So remember having a local um, piece to that, we need to select pro providers that can support us. So we have to have a multiple hybrid model of having a framework that works. So we may have some software inside our company. We may be processing with, for example, let's say we're processing internally and we have the software from SD Works and we're doing the processing in our organization. We're in other organizations where we're going over maybe to an accounting firm to do some of the processing in our smaller countries that we just brought up and we need some accounting services and we also need finance service. So you might have that as one of your solutions. You may also go to an employee of record solution. And really, thirdly, you might just go to an in-country provider. So what is your organization need? And you have a hybrid model to support the business in the country and the location that you actually have, depending on, on growth and the direction of your organization. We talked about really about the dig being digitized and automate. That's automate the processes, having the, the flexibility of having the information at our fingertips delivering to us is, is really what we want and we demand. And we demand that because we need that for the ability to report, but we also need that, that automation to be checking and validating the data that comes in. How many, the, how many new hires were paid in the, in the particular month? Are we, do we have any employees that, that don't, have not received a, a pay slip? Do we do our inputs and our outputs? So with inputs that we're sending to our in-country providers or putting into the system, do they match the, the results that we're receiving back on our gross to net or a payroll results file? Um, if they don't, why don't they match and, and what's the differences? So looking at that automated process, we talked about standardization and working across all of our countries and setting up a plan and direction for that. And if you have none today, or you've evaluated that you think that that is something that you can work on this year, it is a cross-functional project that can be rolled out and setting the stage for the future. And then 
integration, I always on integration, looking at what you're using today for your HR system, where can we get the most value from that HR system? That system costs, costs money to maintain. It also costs money to input. So looking at what you have and what you can share over to a payroll technology platform, looking at what we can share with um, the local vendors, how we're sharing and exchanging files through integration so that it's in a secure place. We're not passing manual files or dropping things around. It just goes directly to the source. And in finance and the benefit systems, when I look at finance, if you're able, the, one of the key things with a technology solution, you bring in your gross to net information. And then at that point, your general ledger file is, is generated within, you let's say within 30 minutes or less, that general ledger file can be delivered directly to your finance system. So nobody is touching it. It definitely helps with audit controls and making sure that everything's secure. So you're sending the information directly. And that applies to, to benefit systems if you needed to send reports out there or get the benefit data, commission data, or maybe even it's pension data in a particular location. Look at the integration processes that are available. As Lucinco already mentioned, um, globally with our complex piece we have, we have to be able to report and we have to have it on, at our fingertips. And that reporting goes into dashboards, being able to measure, change reports, having system alerts, making sure that we're knowing exactly what's happening in the payroll. So we can look at a glance at a calendar and see that we have a problem in Brazil that we're behind with the payroll. And we had four steps and we're still on step one and we were supposed to have been finished today. So really as a global leader, what can we do and where, what are we, how are we gonna manage that situation? So you can go on to the next one. So we want, we want to make sure, um, we wanna stay clear of unwanted consequences. We want you to be successful as you move forward and as many organizations are using with uh, best practices in today in the global world, is we need a global payroll control platform that's going to be able to provide you visibility and have all of the information from your inputs to your outputs to the reporting all at your fingertips so that you're supporting the business. And that supports everybody across the world in every region that you're in or country that you're in around the world. We already talked about standardization and having the standardization of your elements into your technology platform where you're able to see the information in English and then also being able to see it in local language. So that provides the ability for wherever you, the employee is having their, their payroll processed, if it's all done locally, they'll understand that the local language, they'll know what the local language um, name or label is for a tax deduction. And then we also have that in, in English. We talked about automation. So automation is, is key, definitely key as we look at that. So looking at what we have automated today and doing your evaluation, we're gonna encourage you and I'm definitely gonna encourage you as a best practice is to look at those automations and what can we automate and making sure that you understand if we're doing something manually, can we do it Can we do it a different way? And looking at it from another angle. And sometimes it does, depending on the organizations and some the change, change management on that does take some time, but please be patient and move forward. It, it should be a great initiative to think about for this year. And re reporting is, is key, but one of the big things that I see with a technology platform is having the information in the technology platform that you have all of the information for a particular payroll or a particular year or whatever you need when the auditors come so that you are always audit ready. You have a change report available so that you know what's who's changed what when. You have all of the reports that support that particular payroll so that when your auditors come, you have it at the fingertips and, and you can provide it and off they go which provides us then once again, that visibility and control of the information that we actually have in our organization. So we'll go on to the next question, uh, the next slides, Aoife. So you'll have to click through this, I'm just talking about the steps. So if we look at our steps and you may ha already have this mapped out. So this, um, this is really looking at it from a global process. You know, we always have inputs, thinking about where the inputs came 
who's approving those inputs, how are they being sent off to the um, your in-country provider, or how are they being um, sent over to your software? Is it through an integration if you have in-house software? So looking at what that looks like. And then who's calculating it? It could be done internally in-house with software, or it can be done at one of your payroll providers. So looking at that calculation and, and looking at what's going over to that. And then looking at the review of the calculations, the gross to net, the payroll journals, all of the items that come back so that you're looking at that final review and saying that this payroll looks correct, looking at your inputs versus your outputs. And then if you can go to the next um, slide. And then after that payroll has been approved and you received your, um, your, your good, we all know that what are you doing with pay slips? Are you putting them in an employee portal? Are you bringing them back to your HCM? Really looking at what you do with the pay slips in, I'll have Lysenko when we're in our fireside chat talk about what, what he what they're doing with their pay slips at sum up and how beneficial and the feedback from his team when the first country was implemented with that. And then we talked about having those GL reports, having them standardized, generated within minutes and sent over to our finance team. And then any of the tax reporting that is required, any any information that you might need. So is there um, a bank file that needs to be sent to Treasury, what needs to be um, supported in your organization, and how the funding piece is there. You can support the business in that final um, payroll step. So, Aoife, um, I think we have our next polling question. One moment. Okay, so for this poll, um, so your business case for global payroll change, who do you need to convince in that? So who's your main key stakeholder? Is it your HR, um, your HR lead or your HR director, CFO, the board or other? So this is kind of an interesting one. We're always trying to find out, you know, where does payroll sit in an organization? I know it can quite vary throughout the organization. So Lucinka, what do you think? Um, the attendees today will will respond. This one's a hard one, right? Depending yeah, on where you sit in your organization. from the US or from, <laughs> they're from Europe because yeah. I'm working for American yeah. companies and they tend to be in finance. Whereas mm -hmm. if in Europe, we tend to be more people like sum up is they say, a Europe centric company or was a Euro or was a Europe centric company. So we the payroll now reports on the people. Uh, under people. Okay. So yeah. you, you brought both Aoife and you brought up a very interesting uh uh question because yes, sitting in the US, I, I, you might it's probably 52 finance and and uh, 48 um in uh in people or the HR function, but it, it does sit in finance, so then you would need finance through the process and then Yes, working, as you mentioned, Lysenko, that's the, one of the big key things when I started working globally is I saw that the HR and function, the payroll function was done more with the HR team and the people team. Um, often I think that's aligned better. And I know I come from a finance background, so sometimes people will look at me and because I've worked in finance uh, for payroll in the U.S. for many years, but I, I do see the alignment. So. It'll be interesting. So, Aoife, you want to share the results on that one? Yeah. So, so we have a, a overwhelming majority is the CFO still sitting in the finance, <laughs> the, the the money collector, the money, yeah. the money monitor here. <laughs> no, that's definitely yeah. Okay, let's let's move forward. One moment. Can you see the kind of kind of this this slide um, and uh, uh, Eva, oh. you'll also um, just have to bring it up in. What this slide does is kind of put together everything in one place, and we've kind of talked about these pieces on the other slide. But looking at that technology control platform and the building the building of the tool to have the ability to see everything that you need from integration to reporting to monitoring and control looking at the data from a global first approach and having that standardization and then building that standardized unified model across your organization so putting the pieces together to build to make sure that you have a world-class organization so we can go on Aoife to the next slide so right now I 
no matter where you are in your organization, I'm going to say, take action. Don't wait. The future, the future is going to come fast. And you want to make sure, as I, I said, we don't want to be down in the 90s or the dinosaur age. We need to make sure that we have um, the skills and we have the technology to support our business. And we're using, as we looked at those three things, the resources, the processes, and the technology to support the organization. So you want to make sure you can if you're if you can't move to a platform or you don't have funding this year, make sure you start on the documentation, make sure that you have it pulled together and that you know exactly what you want when you build your your business case to support a global payroll management solution. So gather the data, do the research and build out that business case. Look at a call to action to look at your current process flow as we talked about what is what's happening, what's being done manually, how does all of the pieces flow together from the steps that we had from payroll, um, the pre-inputs all the way to the end of the treasury function. And I would also prepare like a risk register if you do nothing or identify the risk in each, or in each country. In some countries, we don't have any risk or there's, they're low risk, but prepare that list and provide that list to senior management. And that's, that is definitely if they see um, the list that you prepared and you have a lot of countries that were in the red level and we have the risk identified, then the call to action is going to be we have to do something because we don't want to be out of compliance or have issues in our organization. Remember, out of compliance or issues of not doing things right are, are twofold. It's a cost to the organization when you get audit, assessed audits and penalties. But it also, in some organizations, they could shut down your operations. So there's business exposure by not being, being compliant and following the rules. And upper management needs to be aware of what that is. So making sure that communication is there. And then plan for a, a global scalable um, platform that's going to work. If it's not this year, make sure that you have it in your plan for 2024 and build that business case out. So if I'm going to have us answer to the last polling question, and then we're going to jump in over to talk uh, to to Lysenko on and talk about sum up. Okay, so for our last one uh, this afternoon, so what's stopping you from changing how you run your payroll? Is it budget restrictions, struggle to create a business case, or you're unsure what model or approach is best for your organization? Well, Lysenka, what what would what do you think that the audience will have will answer or respond in this one? I think it would, would be a, a mixture of the three. Mm -hmm. I, I would I would think I think the budget restrictions are higher this year this, than just for this year, but last year <laughs> yeah. would have been like <laughs> <laughs> it would have been said, go ahead, right? Yeah. Um, so that that's the in, that's the impact of the what happens with the economy that keeps us that keeps us alive and moving forward with change right to be flexible on that so but it doesn't uh, it'll be interesting to see what uh, what the the team responds so Eva what are the the what are the results okay so we have um, so yeah like you said it's very mixed and the unsure of what model or approach is best is coming out on top there at 39%, but it is very even with budget restrictions and struggling to create a business case. Yeah, I think sometimes struggling the business case is, is a difficult because you have to document a lot of items, right? And finding, yeah. and actually finding the time to do that. So putting putting on your calendar some time um, each week to get that pulled together and, and call it as your call to action. So let's go on to the next slide. So we can start a fireside chat with um, with Lysenko. So currently, and I and sum up is is growing every minute of the day, and they're they're moving into into many countries uh, around the world. So they, currently, right now, they have twelve countries with three hundred plus employees, and they required a solution to scale up um, without added. Overhead is when they came to payslip. That's what they were looking for. They didn't want to have additional overhead, but they needed to be able to scale because they have growth and uh, plans to grow in other locations across the world, which created the ability for them to need um, local payroll expertise to make sure that they're compliant and meeting all the requirements. They also needed to have visibility of the cost 
because the growth was going to happen in their organization. So they needed to standardize processes so they could provide the information to financial analysts and people in the organization, along with having the ability to use their Workday integration that they have set up or Workday to have integration and use that to, to make sure that they're providing the information through an integrated processes and looking at the data flows so that they have the ability to scale up at any control. So with that, Lysenko, um, probably if you could just move us to, um, to there. How about, Lysenko, our very first question, you know, please, you can, I shared a, a brief snapshot about sum up, but if you want to share a little bit more about your current footprint and you really actually did just join sum up about 10 months ago. And I know the attendees would love to hear more about your job responsibility and how you kind of went into sum up and started to look at evaluating what was needed. No, no, thanks, Mary. So yes, yeah, sum up is was founded in in twenty twelve. We were like a very small startup for many years, but then we grew exponentially. So now we're a truly global fintech company. We have over like 4 million merchants were using our services and products. We have, you know, offices, 20, more than 20 offices in four continents. So we've really grown as a company. So we, so now my job as, you know, as a payroll manager, as a payroll lead is to make sure that I'm able to keep up, keep up with the growth. So I'm able to, you know, support, you know, the finance leads and the tribe leads when it comes to the global reporting. And when I first started last year, I was only responsible for the EU and the UK. But one of the my, one of the one of the first things that I, you know, I was told to do is we're going we were going to open an Australian office. So then I had to you know set up a payroll in Australia. Then the next thing I was told that we've acquired an, you know, a large company in the US. So now we need we need someone to you know to take take over the US the US payroll from the, you know from from the company from from the you know the the person that was originally responsible in the company that we acquired. So my my scope has expanded considerably since I started. So that's why I needed I need to work with Payslip in the last year to to try and make my life easier when it comes to like reporting when it comes to workflow management and and the way i manage my team because my team is actually based in different jurisdictions we we are i'm i'm and i'm i'm creating a, a centralized team when it comes to processes when it comes to workflows when it comes to reporting but we're all based in different jurisdictions and the payslip platform is is excellent for that for for helping me communicate with them and making sure that you know all of the steps that need to be done by my my payroll partners are done in a timely manner to make sure my my employees are paid on time well, Asinko, um, one of the things I'll do a call out is you didn't have LATAM in your first uh, job description. <laughs> your job yeah, description. Yeah, 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 so LATAM, <laughs> luck, luck, luckily, um, I'm, I'm, I have a, I had a very strong team in Brazil. So, a sum up, a third of the sum ups headcount is actually based in 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 Brazil and and Latin America, but mainly Brazil. So that's something I only had a, a small, you know small knowledge of the Brazilian market because of my previous companies, but I was, it was, I was working, I only had 20 people in my previous company and then got, then taking over, you know, another, another joining sum up, then realizing how complex the actual Brazilian, you know, market is when it comes to payroll processing. So, yeah, so that was tough. Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the call outs I'll say is you have, you have almost a thousand employees there with three different entities, but the call out, I think that, as you inherited the um, that area, I think the stakeholders work very well with you to support you, which which then is part of the whole global process that Payslip does because you can give them the visibility and they can have access rights to to be able to get that. That's correct. So, you know, as you so you walked in the doors, sum up. You got they started throwing um, more more countries and more spaces to you. So what were some of the things that you, you did strategically to think about how you were going to be able to present to upper, upper management they, they needed a technology uh, system as you started to do your kind of review? It's mainly due to the request I was getting from the business and the and, okay. and finance leads and, and the C-suite. Luckily for me, you know, I spoke to all, the, you know, all of the internal stakeholders and I, 
I didn't, to be honest, I didn't have to do much of, of a selling when it came to the, you know, the global platform is because the requests I was getting from the business is they wanted the global reporting, which they weren't receiving on a timely manner and in a, and in, they weren't receiving detailed reports as well. So that's that's another frustration that, you know, the, my C-suite was having because they didn't know the total employment cost in, in multiple jurisdictions because SumUp has grown in via acquisitions and also via organic growth. So, like, so between like the 12 countries that you mentioned that we, mm -hmm. we you know we have in scope with Payslip, six of those countries were countries that we've acquired and six of those the other six are in our new countries like Australia where I had to implement for 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 the business so that so and and because we had acquired those countries the, our central teams in Germany and Bulgaria didn't have the local knowledge immediately to absorb those countries where it came to like the the, the payroll management or where it came to the you know, this the accounting you know the accounting you know management for those for those countries so we needed we needed us to buy time for us to review the you know the in country payroll vendors and whether whether they were suitable for us long term whether we could whether we could just keep them as they are or whether we needed to change them in in a few months time so that's but Luckily, from a from a, a, a stakeholder working with different stakeholders within some of, I was quite lucky because I, I, I when it came to selling the, the platform, it, I was it was actually fairly straightforward for me. Well, and you also brought up a very good point as you started to onboard a few countries. It was really you recognized in other areas that you might have to look at the ICP that they're not going to be able to service some up uh, long term for what they needed to do. So you definitely can evaluate that I needed to make a change. And, and in some cases, you, you're out looking for, for new providers to meet the needs of the, for the country that they're actually in. It might be headcount, but it could also be some finance support that you actually need in those locations. So definitely, I think on the journey, you've, you've looked through that process. And I've seen that, that the visibility, I think, and seeing the standardization, you recognize that as you go into that another next country, what does that look like? And where are some of the gaps as we talked about looking at your organizations across, across is very important. So I'll go on to our next question. Um, when we looked at, when you did the review kind of across the organization and you recommended moving to the global technology platform that we knew was really driven under one important thing that many are driven is really the reporting, but then now that you have you have the platform, you've now standardized your processes, you've been able to have the automation and vis visibility and you have the big picture. Um, can you share with your attendees um, what what Payslip has given you in an operation model? You know, what have you gained to this point? We're actually um, we're kind of in the middle of your implementation, but you've already gained some some insight um, on the reporting and pieces. And then I'd like to really have you kind of share what you're doing with your pay slips and and what that's meant to the organization. Because yeah, another good thing about doing this pay project was uh, the the workflow management because because we were growing via acquisitions, we 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 didn't have proper workflow management when it came. So we had random stakeholders, you know, review, reviewing, you know, payroll data in different jurisdictions. Where then as so one of my main tasks was also to centralize the, the work from from these, you know, decentralized stakeholders, where there was a country manager in Italy, where there was a finance lead in, in Lithuania, where there was, you know, a people operations in another jurisdiction. So that's another reason that Paysip helped me. I, I use this opportunity to create the, the correct workflow for, for, you know, for our, our new our new team, our, our new global payroll team now, that is now. So that, that's why I used, and I used the integrations from, so we're still building the integrations from for example for brazil to from workday to our icp you know to pace it into icp so which will, will mean the team will stop having to you know to do the you know the the self-service and the when it comes to the data entry on the in-country payroll vendors portal so that's that will save so much time the next step the, the pay slip will provide is the gl so sap payroll journals so because a lot of our you know smaller in-country payroll vendors they're able to provide local payroll journals but they're not able to provide the sap journal that we need as as a, as a group as a sum up group so which we which we share with you know 
with our accounting team in in Bulgaria, which then they 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 book accordingly for the rest of the business to you know to review and to make business decisions. So that was, and then the other item was the integrations back from from the vendors to to us, like the pay slips. We were able to integrate then the pay slips back into Workday because we get a lot of tickets from our stake from our employees requesting you know you know access to our, our various portals that we have in the different jurisdictions in some countries we don't even have you know portals for the employees to access the pay slips uh, my team had to literally email individual pay slips to individual you know employees so uh, so as a solution and as a time saving method now my, uh, for those countries that we've gone live on pay slip the employees can actually just click on the pay section on workday and they'll be they'll be able to see their pay slips with a breakdown of their earnings their net pay and everything else they need uh, they need so that's that's one of some of the main items. No, well, thanks, Lucinco. I think they, um, to me, and uh, talking to to clients that we have at Payslip, or a, and even outside people, we talk about bringing the Payslip back into the HCM, so you have that employee experience. We all know um, having a unified employee experience. As we talked about standardization is key, but it really does help our stakeholders and payroll by saying, "Here, you just go out to myself or or my, you know, my." my payroll, whatever it's called in the organization, and they click there and everything's there. And it's no more, um, as you said, passing the things over or many portals, you're trying to figure out passwords and pieces. I always find it, it funny, um, in, past, in past life, you have all these portals and nobody remembers which password that you need to have. So it, it does definitely save time. And it was one of the, I remember one of the team members when that first went through one of the, he was so happy that, um, that he had, they had the pay slips there sharing that the experience. So that just, that saves time, a lot of time for questions. So really looking at that. So Lucinka, we, we knew that we talked about the, um, your organization wanting that global reporting, but as you were looking through that, what happens if, you know, if you had, if today, if you were in sum up and you didn't have a payroll um, technology solution, what do you think life would be like um, in your organization if you didn't have the tools? I would just be spending so many hours getting gathering their information together, converting the local, you know, payroll vendors reports into a, you know, into a standard format using pivots, using macros. So that's what I would have to do. You know, I'll, I'll, the, in my my tribe leads sum up is organized into different tribes. We ha we have different and each each and which makes things a bit more complicated because these tribe leads may have some employees in the U.S., some employees in Brazil, some employees in Germany, and they they want to see their total employment costs for their particular tribe. And I would have to then collate all the and, and, and consolidate all of the information from all these different, you know, payroll reports and payroll registers in, in completely different formats. And in, in sometimes with, without the total, in some countries, I don't even receive the total employment cost at the moment. So we'd have to, we have to, we'd have to combine multiple reports for me to provide, you know, the, the detailed breakdown that my, you know, my, my tribe leads need for, for them to make their business decisions when it comes to downsizing, when it comes to, you know, investment in, in, when it comes to, so, so whether, you know, the business needs, you know, they can, they can decide based on the actual payroll costs of that particular cost center. And, and then they can make, you know, you know, a decision based on, on data. No, I, I definitely, um, and I don't think you could have moved forward with um, the role and expanded responsibilities without having a technology solution. Um, so we go through that. So I know we talked, to, um, you kind of shared a lot about your organization, but you know, what two items advice would you provide to um, payroll professionals who are, who are evaluating um, a change in a global payroll technology platform? Um, during the complex times we have today with the economy and the workforce, what, what suggestions do you have to, to have them bring that to management or, or what can they do now and take action, they might take action in 2024? It, well, in in my opinion, having like a global payroll aggregator, it's it's a, it's an it's an ideal tool for like a multi-country payroll department. Even even when there's complex changes, in my opinion, even especially when there's complex changes, because you can quickly add new entities, like we did in Brazil, where we added the third entity. We can make this make decision, you know, whether it's, whether the growth is via acquisitions or mergers or organic growth. You can you can add that payroll vendor in that particular jurisdiction into your global 
global payroll platform in a in a in a quick timely manner without having to to you know find a new payroll vendor without having to to you know, to, to to change the process straight away. You can do that in the future when you have the the resources and the and the bandwidth. But you know at the moment, if you just want you know detailed reporting based on the data that you have, you know, globally, you know, in aggregate, it's an, it's an excellent tool for, for, for in a, in a complex and a changing environment in my, in my opinion. So I would advise, you know, I would, I would advise anyone that if, if you, if you feel like, you know, your business will face, you know, different scenarios, you know, in the coming year and, and aggregate is a good solution because you are able to, you know, to, Pop in entities into the aggregator. You're able to, you know, downsize, you know, headcounts if needed quickly, and you know, and it's it it's it doesn't impact the rest of the team's workload because you you're able to get your you know your standardized reporting. You're able to have your workflow man management. So you and then you're able to to you know to scale up or scale down if needed. Yeah. So I think when you talk about the aggregator, you're aggregating your local providers into the technology platform so that you have a technology piece. Yes, in some cases that uh, local provider may be in two or three countries, so you're using um, that country footprint or that vendor's services, um, where in others you're, you're aggregating all of your um, payroll providers into one platform so you have the, abil the ability to move forward. So Aoife, um, what, um, we had one last slide that was really just talking about, you know, doing a, a quick look on, and I don't know that we necessarily need to show the slide. It's really looking picture where you are today, decide and then manage. And I think Lucinko's helped us with that, but I kind of wanted to move over to the questions from the attendees so that we can answer a few questions. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Um, just bear with me one moment. So um, let's see the um, first question I have in here. Um, so what is the one piece of advice you could give in terms of framing conversation about around global payroll investment or stating the business case? That probably links back to our poll earlier about the challenge with the creating the business case. So Lucinko, do you have any advice or um, I can pop in um, if you... What you, you can probably remember. I was going to say you can go back to Mary's checklist at the beginning of the presentation, where you went through. Do do you review your data? Review how much your your current you know payroll providers are costing you. Review how much you know how complex you know the process is. Is your is your provider doing the relevant you know reports? So the issue we had is we were acquired very small companies, and which then grew fa faster than the and then the current payroll providers are able to support us. So now we're looking at, and we're at that stage where now we need to change payroll providers because they're not able to you know, handle all of the reporting needs now we have. It's one thing when you have 10 people, it's another thing when you have 50 plus people in countries like Italy and Spain, where you, you need you know, better better support from the, the local payroll vendors. But you, but that's the main issue I had was I didn't, you know, I, I I was getting new countries and I didn't have the local knowledge. So I need I need time to review and make a decision then in the future on whether I need to change the ICP. Yeah. So um, when we when we look at the business case, so it depends on your organization how in depth it is or how small it can be. So if there's a range. So first of all, it's always checking, you know, with your finance team that as we already know, the CFO is the one that's doing that, is what's required uh, to, from a business standpoint, what's the standard? So getting the standards, sometimes you can work with the procurement. And then looking at where you are today, so doing that discovery and looking at identifying the gaps and risk, because those are gonna be key, because you're, you're gonna want to, to make sure that you've kind of done your homework and documented those items for, for management. Um, who's involved in the, in the, you know, how we're going to do it is, you know, we're going to need resources. So who's going to be involved and what time estimates you have and to, to really just get, you know, some easy, easy templates. So um, we live in the world today that we're very fortunate. If you go out to, to Google business case, you'll get a lot of great, first of all, a couple of things, a lot of great templates. And then you'll also get some, some best practices and pieces to that. And then I would also on that is reach out to other payroll professionals that, who's had to prepare that because I've seen business cases that 
were pages long that needed to go through a process where others, you just do a one page summary and that depends on your organization. But it's really defining what you need and really the action of not taking, if you, the consequences of not taking action at the end of the day, it's an impact to the organization if you don't move forward because you may lose resources because they don't see, they don't want to do manual work and they see no growth in the organization. You also may have compliance issues and compliance issues are something that has to seriously be um, looked at. And then just really not supporting the business and providing the information they need. Payroll as an organization isn't viewed as a key player in the organization. You know, payroll is the center of the universe. People may not know that yet, but we have to communicate that out because all roads at the end of the day lead to that payroll group. You know, it doesn't matter the employee, it, it, the tax agencies come to us, the auditors come to us and, and treasury comes for all the funding. So everything comes back to payroll. So thinking about how at the end of the day, how you play and build that case. Through that, there is a lot of documentation, and that's why I would say if you've never done one, um, get some some information that's out on on the internet. You can always uh, reach out to Eva, and I'll give you I can give you a, a few pointers or directions of where to look. Um, yeah, I but was, is it? I was actually going to say sorry to cut across. You. We <laughs> actually have some handy content on our resources section on our website on payslip.com, and we have an organization health check, and we have the, a business case. We actually even have an RFP template there as well. So there's a good, good a lot of resources there when putting together a business case. So we have a lot of templates on available there. And 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 I was going to say a great question, and probably one of the hardest things you have to do. And and if it's your first or it's been your 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 fifth, you kind of go through the process. But it depends on the organization. So thank you, Aoife. Do we have any any other questions? Um, so I think we have. I don't know if we have time for it, but we'll just go for the last one. So. I find the pre-payroll data cleansing stage eating up a lot of my time. What's the best way to fix this and create breathing space in payroll cycles? Uh, so I'll do real quick. Um, evaluate what manual work is coming in. Um, do we have any integration? Um, measure where the issues are. So measure. If you don't measure, you're not going to be able to fix it, right? So measure. Um, is it a stakeholder issue? Um, what is the timing of all those items? So looking at what's happening there and you have many stakeholders and the information coming in. So that's kind of a, a real quick snapshot on that one. Um, and looking at, I would say measure it and make sure that you have the time um, of what's happening with it in your workflow. In the technology platform, you do have the workflow tool to have the workflow measured. And that's another way with a technology solution, you can measure the performance of stakeholders and ICPs. So if you have issues, then you can talk about the results. The, the, data, the data tells the story. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, um, that's the, we're at the top of the hour here. We're actually a couple of minutes over. So um, I just want to say thank you very much for Lysenko to for joining us today. It's been excellent having you on. Um, hopefully you'll be able to join us again in some future webinars. Uh, thank you very much, Mary, for running today's webinar. Thank you to all their participants, and um, you will all receive that email with the, um, the links to the recording. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. Um, copy, I'll make sure that the copy of the deck is also included in that email, um, but any questions at all, just reach out to us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.